Hi, my name is Tilak Pasala. Thank you for watching the video abstract of my paper, Clinical Economic Studies of Eptifibatide in Coronary Stenting, which is published in Therapeutics and Clinical Risk Management, a Doe Press publication. Effective platelet inhibition is vital during and after percutaneous coronary intervention, RPCI. Platelet adhesion and aggregation at the site of coronary stenting can have catastrophic clinical and economic consequences. A key role played by platelets in pathological thrombosis forms the basis for using various anaplatelet agents in patients with acute coronary syndrome undergoing PCI. Aspirin, a thromboxin A2 inhibitor, when used alone has limited efficacy in preventing cardiovascular events after coronary stenting. This led to the development of potent anaplatelet agents that block different pathways in platelet activation and aggregation such as P2Y12 receptor blockers like clopidogrel and glycoprotein or GP2B3A inhibitors like eptifibatide. Eptifibatide, a glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor, is a synthetic cyclic heptapeptide that contains a lysine, glycine, aspartic acid sequence that resembles hemotaxin in the venom of southern pygmy rattlesnake. It is a reversible competitive antagonist that binds to the active site of glycoprotein 2B3A receptor and prevents platelet aggregation and thrombus formation. It is given intravenously and reaches peak plasma concentration in 5 minutes and has a half-life of 2.5 to 2.8 hours. Eptifibatide and its metabolites are primarily eliminated by the kidneys and it's given usually as a double bolus of 180 micrograms per kg followed by an infusion of at the rate of 2 micrograms per kg per minute. However, in patients with renal dysfunction with a creatinine clearance less than 50 milliliters per minute, it is given at a lower infusion at a rate of 1 micrograms per kg per minute. In clinical studies, eptifibatide was associated with significant reduction of mortality, myocardial infarction, or target vessel revascularization in patients with acute coronary syndrome undergoing PCI. However, recent trials conducted in the era of dual anaplatelet therapy and newer anticoagulants failed to demonstrate similar results. The previously seen favorable benefit of eptifibatide was mainly offset by the increased risk of bleeding. The current American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association guidelines recommend eptifibatide use as an adjunct in high-risk patients who are undergoing PCI with traditional anticoagulants like heparin or anoxaparin who are not otherwise at high risk of bleeding. In patients receiving bivalorin, a newer direct thrombin inhibitor and a newer safer anticoagulant, routine use of eptifibatide is discouraged. We use eptifibatide for patients who have high risk ACS who present to the intensive care unit and uh, you know that's before they reach to the cath lab, that's one indication. More commonly we use it in the cath lab when we see somebody with acute coronary syndrome and very large thrombus burden, for example somebody with a vein graft. Uh, we also use it in patients where that we need to do bailout, uh, especially in situations where there's no reflow or slow reflow. And lastly, uh, you know, occasionally we'll have patients with acute MI where we do an angioplasty and we uh, discuss that they need bypass surgery and instead of using an oral antiplatelet agent, we'll leave those patients on uh, IV eptifibatide. I think the key to using eptifibatide is to use the right bolus and infusion. So when we use eptifibatide for our pre-cath patient on the ICU floor, we give a single bolus of 180 microgram per kg and an infusion of 2 microgram per kg per minute in patients with normal renal function. In the cath lab, they get two bolus 10 minutes apart of 180 microgram per kg per minute and then followed by an infusion at 2 microgram per kg per minute. 
In patients with decreased creatinine clearance, uh, you can decrease the dose to half, which is one microgram per kg per minute, and that's just the infusion part. The bolus remains the same. Um, we do want to make sure that you know we monitor platelet count in patients where we leave them on epifibrotide infusion overnight. And finally, in patients uh, where we use epifibrotide, we prefer to use radial access. Uh, in fact, we use radial access for most of our interventions, so bleeding at access site has become less and less important uh, as we have switched to radial access. Cost effective analysis of epitifibotide is worth mentioning. The older pharmacoeconomic studies favor epitifibotide. However, in the recent era of P2Y2 receptor inhibitors and newer, safer anticoagulants, the increased costs associated with bleeding make the routine use of epitifibotide an economically non viable option. The cost effectiveness of epitifibotide with the use of strategies that decrease the bleeding risk, for example, Radial, act, radial access for PCI is unknown. This review provides an overview of key clinical and economic studies of epitifibotide well into the current era of dual antiplatelet therapy, novel safer anticoagulants, and contemporary PCI. Thank you.